Hey fellow coders, welcome to Game Dev with Tony. In this video, we'll learn how to load and save game settings from a JSON file directly into a scriptable object, ensuring they stay persistent between game sessions. This is especially important because by default, scriptable objects don't save the runtime changes when your app closes. Let's dive in. In the previous video, we built a storybook using scriptable objects as pages. All the data was set in the inspector and persisted between runtime sessions because it was embedded in the asset. No changes were made to the scriptable object properties during runtime. But what if we wanted to make dynamic changes, like setting the page's image to a different sprite? Would the scriptable object retain the change on the next run? Unfortunately, no. Even direct script modifications to its properties disappear after runtime. To fix this, we'll save the scriptable object's memory to an external file and load it back up when it starts. For this sample, I'm using JSON, JavaScript Object Notation, if you haven't heard of it, it's a super popular, lightweight, and easy to understand text format common in web development, and you can edit it with any text editor. To put this into practice, we'll simulate a game configuration screen. It'll have all the usual suspects, a display resolution dropdown, a full screen toggle, volume sliders, an input field for the player's name, and a save button. This will give us a really solid real world example. Now to the project. You can find the source code and assets up on GitHub. The link is in the description. Typically we start with an empty project, but not this time, since the design is strictly UI elements and the code is our main focus. I'm going to show you what to add into the scene. The positions can be approximate, or feel free to use your own layout. In the hierarchy, add an empty game object and name it Game Manager. Then add a UI text field. This will automatically add in a canvas and an event system. Right click on the canvas and add an empty game object. This will be the group for the controls. You can drag the text field to make it a child of the control group. Then add in a dropdown, a toggle, two sliders, an input field, and a button. Note that I didn't use Text Mesh Pro controls, just the standard ones. Their names aren't important because they'll be added as references to the manager script. Use Ctrl D on the keyboard to duplicate the text field a few times to label the sliders and input field. Adjust their text and positioning. When you finish, you should have something similar to my screen. Next, create a couple folders called Scripts and Settings. In scripts, create four C sharp files. Name them Resolution Option, Game Settings, Settings Manager, and UI Manager. Let's review all the code files starting with Resolution Option. Open it in Visual Studio. Resolution Option defines a structure for each screen resolution that will populate the drop down control. There are three properties the screen width, height, and refresh rate, a constructor for when the object instance is created, the values are passed in and assigned internally. Last is to override the toString method. When we call it from an object, it'll return the formatted string containing the resolution properties. The game setting script is for our scriptable object. It'll hold our configuration settings for the UI controls. A static read-only list is created and populated with predefined resolutions. In a real game, the available screen resolutions would be queried and this list would contain those. Then we have three public functions. The first provides default values for the scriptable object. Next is a validation method to test the setting values. It goes through each one, and if everything checks out, it returns true, otherwise false. The last is to apply the settings of the screen resolution and audio. When you run this in the Unity player, nothing will happen with the screen resolution. However, it will with the build. So if you test this out, make sure you pick a screen resolution that your hardware supports. The third script is for the settings manager. It interacts with the game setting scriptable object. Our JSON file name is declared along with the file path, and we use Unity's persistent data path. It varies based on the operating system and project export type. You can read their documentation for more information on it. Then we have two delegates that invoke at different points, when the settings file is loaded and when it's saved. You can attach your own functions to these to receive notifications when each action completes. In awake, we make sure the scriptable object is assigned in the inspector, then load and apply the settings. The project uses a save button to store the settings to a file, but you could also use on application quit. Load settings reads in the JSON file and populates the scriptable object. First we see if the file exists, and if it doesn't, then we use default values. However, if the file is present, we use a try catch block. The file reading and validation is wrapped in the try. We create a temporary scriptable object and load the JSON settings into it. Then we use validate settings to make sure all the values check out. Say that's true, then we load the JSON again, but this time into the real scriptable object. But if for whatever reason those values don't pass inspection, then we use default values. Then the temp object is destroyed. 
If the try block encounters an exception, then we use default values in that case as well. Finally, the game settings are applied to and any subscribers on the delegate are notified that the loading is complete. For save settings, we use a try catch block. We serialize a scriptable object into a JSON string and write it to the settings file. Any subscribers will be notified upon completion. The remaining public functions, except for the last one, have to do with getting values sent from the UI controls and updating the scriptable object. Finally, the last function returns the current game settings. The UI Manager script is a bridge between our interface and settings. It takes the values from the controls and sends them to the Settings Manager for storage, and vice versa with retrieving them and populating the control values. It starts with declaring references to all our UI controls. Below that are a couple private variables for the Settings Manager and the current game settings object. In Awake, there is a lot of initial setup. We make sure the Settings Manager is attached to a game object and then get the game settings if found. A list of all the resolutions is assembled and then added to the dropdown. All the controls have listener functions added for detecting value changes and the save button being clicked. At the bottom, delegates are used to notify subscribers when setting loads and saves have completed. Start calls the function below to update the UI with the game settings. OnDestroy handles the cleanup. All the control and delegate listeners are removed. Update UI from settings takes the values from the scriptable object and updates the corresponding controls. The next series of functions are the event handlers. When a dropdown option is changed or a slider is moved, those new values are sent to the settings manager to update the scriptable object. And when the save button is clicked, the game settings are saved to the JSON file and the screen resolution is applied. Because we stay in the Unity player for this demo, we won't see that happen. But if you build this project and run it as an executable, the display will adjust to the selected resolution if supported. With the code in place, you can create a game settings scriptable object. In the Settings folder, right-click and you'll find the Scriptable Objects menu. Here is the Game Settings object. It has the properties for the Resolution drop-down index, full screen flag, volume slider values, and the player's name. Next, you detach the Settings Manager and the UI Manager scripts to the Game Manager object. Assign the Game Settings Scriptable object to the Settings Manager and all the UI controls to the UI Manager. That's the setup. If we play the scene, we can interact with the controls and watch the properties of the scriptable object change. The UI manager responds to the event listeners. Those in turn send the values to the settings manager, and it updates the scriptable object. Once the save button is clicked, the game settings are stored in the JSON file. Plus, when the app is launched again, the settings are read, validated, and applied to the controls. Where the JSON file is located depends on the persistent data path. In my case, I'm using Windows. So it's in my user folder, app data, local low, the company name, which I never changed in the Unity project settings, so default company, and the app name. With the volatile nature of scriptable objects, we can effectively use external files to maintain data persistence. And that brings us to the end of the video. I use JSON here, but there are plenty of other options like XML, custom binary files, and even databases like MySQL or SQL Server. You could also load and save the data to a remote server. There are pros and cons with everything, so weigh your options when you choose your approach. This is Game Dev with Tony signing off. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.